From 2010 to 13, Tara Bird Kelly Ulebe is Professor Caroline Marseille on the Tree of Texts project, which is an investigation of the theory behind systematic analysis of classical and individual manuscript texts. The suite of online tools developed for the project are freely available online as a study. Another course proper on the project is the Chronicle of Matthew of Vanessa online project, which is funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation. In this project, a digital critical edition is being built using a graph-based model for the text and its historical commentary. After having served as Professor of Digital Humanities in Bern, Switzerland, for three years, uh, Tara moved to Vienna recently, where she has taken up the first Viennese chair as of 1st September of this year. So 
some people in the humanities have taken the idea of close reading to technology and taken it a little bit too far. We have to care about every single angle bracket. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so we should have the scholars working that which is to which is to conceive of the conceive of the work they're trying to do, conceive of the questions they're trying to answer, the evidence they have. And on the other hand, the programmers who know what is possible to do with computers, know how these analytical methods might work and talk to each other. But we couldn't in the power thought experiments for how digital humanity centers should work ever come up with a stats subjective and 
society of what we want to have is towards purification and categorization. That you have to take everything and decide, is it nature? Is it humanity? Is it, is it society? Is it, is it science? Or is it humanities? Is it computing? Shake their fists at those who would call it a standard 
for DES class, and I remember, um, I'm like,
how that constitutes research. And just 10 days ago on the humanist list, Willard McCarty posted another question. He was quoting who he calls one of his intellectual heroes, the cognitive psychologist George Miller, who says, who said that some questions are like a cavity and a tooth. We keep coming back to probe them over and over until our tongues grow raw on their jagged edges. And he, and Miller apparently describes his own research topic as one of these questions that he constantly comes back to to probe and that is never exhausted. And Miller wants to know, do we in digital human humanities have any such powerful question to ask? After all this time, after being anointed the
the software. And yours points to the many people before him who have argued for code as younger scholarship. It wasn't, it wasn't original with him, but in adding to this, he points out the intellectual obligation, not only for non, he says, if digital objects and code are an integral part of the scholarly argument, then the producers have an obligation to claim the contribution they make to it. Not just to make a righteous claim to academic credit to say,
that is serving our purpose. Acknowledgement and assessment of the scholarly content of code. This might mean code reviews in academic journals. It might mean, it might mean being able to put your software creation on your tenure, tenure committee. But as much as I said acknowledgement on the slide, I also here say assessment. It's not enough to write a tool and say, therefore, I did scholarship. There has to be some means for someone to be able to critically assess how have you pushed the field forward with the software? What have you, what assumptions have you made? Are those assumptions interesting? And are they going to, are they going to help us understand better whatever it is we're trying to do here? Having the intent to create and train scholars who transcend this dichotomy between science and humanities. I never said it was going to be easy. We are the way our education system is set up today, you have to choose between science and humanities. And if you're going to take a path like I have taken, it means that you're going to be spending a while pretending you're doing one career and then start backing up five years, starting and spending, and basically it's going to take, the way the system is set up now, it's going to take double the time to get someone who can operate cleanly or operate fluently in both the digital and the humanities as it is for someone who does one or the other. This is going to need some differences in how we train scholars, how we create scholars, how we, how we integrate digital, digital understanding into humanities understanding, and maybe not separating them so much. And finally, very important, this, we want to keep up the good work that we are trying to do with outreach and support to maintain inclusivity in the field. Because I am talking about a massive program of training and education that needs to happen if digital humanities is to be is to be expected. And I should back up and say that we don't have to say that all of our humanists need to learn to code. But if you want to be exploring this, if you want to be exploring this intermarriage of algorithmic thinking and hermeneutics, then you're going to need both skills. And in order to make sure that people who are doing this are not overwhelmingly white male and from the West, we need to have good outreach and we need to make sure that we are doing everything on the official, unofficial, and cultural and well beyond digital humanities, in fact. Every, there's, it's a huge problem and it's going to require a huge solution to make sure that we're getting adequate representatives of different cultures within this. Because remember, when the Enlightenment went separating nature and society, a lot of that which was in Western Europe was left behind because there are cultures out there who do not make this separation between nature and society. We in Western academia take it completely for granted, and that's one of the things we're going to have to consider as we talk about inclusivity. So this is where I will leave the talk. I hope I have, um, I hope I have given some food for thought to this conference as we as we talk about standards. Be sure to also talk about relevance and meaning and scholarship and how you go beyond the standard to say something related to our knowledge. Thank you very much.